All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're going over how to replace a failing drive on TrueNAS. I'm gonna be doing this in TrueNAS scale, but it's pretty much the exact same thing in TrueNAS core. And we're gonna be first identifying the drive, then actually going through that resilvering process to rebuild it, and just going over all those pieces. Because unfortunately, if you're using one of the community editions, as in you're using it on your own hardware, you have a very specific way you have to identify the drives. Unfortunately, there's no consistent format for JBODs and other SAS things to actually finding what drive has failed. So you actually have to use the serial number unless you have a couple of other options. And we're going to be talking about that all in this video. So this is all really assuming that you've got a drive that has failed. And one really nice thing about TrueNAS is if you have a drive that is failing, ZFS actually has a very cool way of essentially online pulling it off and replacing it before the drive actually fails. And so that's really nice. And so because you don't actually have to fully offline the disk, you don't ever have a period where you've lost redundancy. Essentially the entire time that disk is still active. And so maybe it's having some issues, it's throwing some errors, it's timing out, it's being slow, but it's still able to copy all of that data off of it and that means that if there is something that goes wrong with another disk, you've not lost the redundancy of the first one yet, which is really valuable. It also makes this process go much, much, much faster because it's really easy to clone a disk, but especially with the ZFS and just the way the blocks work and the fact that there's a variable stripe size that really kind of changes how the RAID works compared to the RAID 5, it can be a lot slower to rebuild a disk because there are a lot of random reads associated with it. So the way you actually go ahead and do that is you come in and you actually manage your devices. And what you can do is you find the one with the error and you can actually hit this replace button right here, which is really useful. So what that allows you to do is you just select a specific disk you'd like to use. And so it will just copy all that data over. And once it's done, boom, you're just up and running without ever actually having to take your pool into a degraded state. The next thing that's important to do is actually figure out if there is an error and what error it might be. So for me, I actually already know it's, I've seen this error a couple times, and so I know this disk has been having some issues. And so we can see that the pool is not healthy, but when we look at our actual disks, because I ran a scrub already, we can see that there's no actual errors given on any specific drive. And that is one annoying thing so you do sometimes have to do a little bit more digging to figure out which drive is actually bad. In this case, there's a lot of indicators for me. When I come into the manage devices, we can see that it's been throwing a few different ZFS checksum errors. This also happens to be a SAS drive where the rest of my drives are SATA drives in this. I actually replaced it with the wrong drive as a test to make sure we could do SAS and SATA drives in the same pool. And while it does technically work, I would not recommend running it in the long term. I think my actual JBOD is having some issues with that. And so I think that's the primary issue with it. But because we don't have a clear indicator on which drive it is, we've got a good hint here, but everything does say online because I did do a scrub already. We're gonna come in and we're gonna do a couple of shell commands to just check and see a little bit more information. So to do that, we're going to come in and I'll go ahead and expand this. We're gonna do zpool status dash V and figure out your pool name. And this zpool status dash V is very useful because it actually tells us what happened. So here, we don't really know what happened because of the way ZFS kind of works. Even if the ZFS error is corrected, it actually stays in this errored state to inform you, hey, this is still something you wanna check out. That way, an automated scrub doesn't kind of just overwrite these issues if there are things. So we can see that there were some real errors here. And when I actually ran it, it did actually do a resilver here. And we're going to go ahead and kind of break down this right here. So we can see that it's told us everything we need to know. So status, one or more devices has experienced an unrecoverable error. An attempt was made to correct the error and everything's okay. Now we can also see that the last time we did a check, a scrub, it actually did a resilver. So what a resilver is, is a repair. So this is telling us that yes, that drive, whatever drive it was, 
did actually have some true errors and it actually had to replace 160 gigs. So that tells me that, hey, there is something going on with that and we are going to want to do a ZFS replace for sure for it. And so with this, we can see that at one point there were some errors and because I did run that scrub, it's kind of overwritten them. And now it is technically healthy, but because I have had issues with this drive for a while, I am still gonna to wanna to replace it. Now we know which one it is because if we come into our manage devices, we can see that historically this drive has had four ZFS errors. And these were four checksum errors, which means that the values put in there were not correct. And now unfortunately, this is where it gets very hard to tell exactly which drive you're having an issue with, depending on how you're set up. So unless you've actually got iX Systems hardware, you're not gonna actually be able to tell which drive is having the error, as in you're not gonna tell which slot it is. For me, this is actually funny because this is the only SAS drive in the system right here. And so I can tell you right now, I know exactly which one it is, but otherwise there are a few other things I would have to do to actually identify what drive it is. The first and most guaranteed way of identifying the drive is serial number. If you are doing a massive drive deployment, a lot of companies will actually take all the serial numbers, create barcodes and actually drop them all in place and then identify where each serial number is in terms of the chassis. It is a laborious process, but especially if you need to be able to online these drives guaranteed in the future and you wanna be able to do this all without shutting the system down, that is the most dependable way of doing it all. You know exactly which drive it is. There are also sometimes some commands you can run and some JBODs will actually have an IPMI interface that can tell you which drives are plugged in and where they are located. So it really depends on your exact system. One other thing you can do is use the disk lights. And especially if you're somebody who has the ability to shut down the pool to confirm this, the disk lights can be quite useful. What I will often do in cases of this is really just watch the pool for the one that has the light on for the longest time. The lights in your pool generally show how busy something is. And a drive that's failing will either have the light on for a very long time as it's having a lot of trouble, it's spending a lot of time doing reads and writes because of these errors, or it may have been completely offline, in which case no lights will show up at all. So that is the other indicator you can use. What I'd recommend doing, especially if you only have a little bit of redundancy like running RAID Z1, is to just see that light, then offline the pool. So eject the pool, shut the NAS down if you can, and then check the serial number that way. In this case, I have this very easy. This is the only SAS drive in there. So I know exactly which one it is because the SAS drive indicator light is on for it. So I can tell exactly which spot it is in. And what I will highly recommend doing is before you actually pull out the drive, go ahead and run a manual scrub. Run your scrub so that way, basically you're leaving your pool in as clean of a state as possible especially if you're somebody who does not have an extra slot where you can have both drives in at the same time. By running a scrub, you make sure there's no other errors. And that way, it, when you do degrade your pool, you're unlikely to have other issues. I still recommend anytime you do this, go ahead and just spend this time to double check your backups because you don't want to have this be the time that you realize, oh, hey, your backups aren't working. So it's really a good time, sit down, Check your backups so that way you have a known good state should the unlikely thing happen. But what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to select that drive with the errors and I am now going to offline it. If I had that spare drive slot, if I had another drive slot I could put it in, have both of them in at the same time, I would be able to replace it. But unfortunately, I can only offline it. And now we can see that it is degraded and that is offline. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this guy on up and I'm going to pull out the drive with the issues and just replace it with this guy. All right, so now I've pulled her on out and now I'm going to confirm that this is in fact the drive that was having the issues. So one really nice thing about ZFS is it has a great resilfer where you can actually plug the drive back in and not have to format the entire thing if it was just pulled out for a little while, which is great. So if you do mess up and pull out the wrong drive, 
stop, go through, re-silver it immediately, and you can be back up and running within a matter of minutes, which is really, really valuable. So definitely take this time to double check it is the right pool, and that's why it's great if you can turn this thing off. For this, it's running too many critical services for me to turn off, and it's a good test to know exactly what happens. So now, I'm just going to pull out the drive and replace it on out. All right, and so now I've just replaced it, and I'm gonna be able to go ahead and just slot this thing back in as we're running. Now, in an ideal world, I'd be able to do a couple of other things because there is always a very good chance whenever you get a new drive that it's dead on arrival. Somewhere between 1% and 10% of drives are gonna be dead on arrival, and it really kind of is a complete luck piece. If you get a bad batch, you can get a lot of them as bad, and you can go years without having a single bad drive. It's really just a bit of luck. And so one thing that's really great to do if you can is to actually go ahead and be able to have this thing in the system, not necessarily even running data off of it, but just running for a couple of days beforehand. So if you have an existing system that you just don't need anything, have it running, and that way any failures are likely to come out. In the ideal world, there's these deep tests that you can do to burn them in and make sure everything's good. But from my experience, drives either fail very quickly just by existing in a system for a while, or they're going to be pretty much fine. And then the other thing that would be ideal is if I did have a hot spare. So the hot spare would have taken care of a lot of this and I would have been able to just switch over without any trouble whatsoever. And then it would just rebuild to this new drive once I replaced it. But for a system like this with RAID Z2, it is not that big of a deal. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and slot it back on in and we're gonna go through the resilvering process. All right, so now I've just gone ahead and plugged her back on in and we're just gonna go ahead and hit this replace button. And now we can replace and we can see that there's this new drive put back on in there. We're gonna go ahead and just preserve all of the info and just hit replace disk. So now what we can see it is doing right now, and we'll go ahead and just rerun the ZFS command. We can see that it is replacing that drive right here as the old one has been completely offline, sitting right here and the new one is getting online added. It is going to go ahead and bring all that over with a process called resilvering. And resilvering is a big contention in ZFS because for massive enterprise systems that are being hit 100% of the time, 24 seven, resilvering can take a remarkably long amount of time. Resilvering is the lowest priority task on a ZFS system. And so if you're busy, 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 you can end up where resilvering could take weeks. However, for a system like this, and honestly most small, medium-sized business systems, there are periods of massive downtime where not much is happening at all. And for times where you do have systems like that, resilvering ends up going pretty quick because while it is running at the bottom of the priority list, if there's nothing else going on, it has the ability to run fairly quickly. Overall, from my experience, I don't see a massive performance impact during a resilvering process. There is always going to be one because now it has to read a lot more random data to get the data out. But because of how well ZFS is optimized for random reads, it tends to be pretty solid. So now we are just gonna wait. Our pool the entire time is just going to be operating just like it would anyway. And we are just going to wait for this resilver process to finish. I would recommend checking on it in a couple of hours. Really, from my experience, especially if you've not had a chance to burn this disk, if there is a crazy issue, you will identify this issue pretty early on. One other thing, this drive, the one I pulled out, actually still can be online fairly quickly. It has a lot of the pool information on there, so keep it around until you know this process has worked, especially if you hadn't had a chance to do the burn in. Even though this disk is going to fail eventually, or having some weird issue, I'm imagining it's not actually an issue with the disk, but rather the actual SAS controller on this JBAW that I've duct taped together basically, then it can be put back in and it can be used overall. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And from that, we're just gonna let this thing go. If I get a chance to, I'll actually leave how long this resilver took for this 
This is a VDEV that I think is 75% full, and so it is going to take a while for VDEVs, but I'll leave that down here if I get a chance to. And from there, we're just gonna keep plugging along and acting business as usual. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one, bye.